Welcome back to another episode of Muscle Car of the Week. And today we're featuring the incredible Pontiac Can-Am. Having been produced for only six months in 1977, the Pontiac Can-Am is a rare gem in the muscle car world. This unique vehicle was built on the Pontiac Le Mans and aimed to bring back the glory of the iconic GTO, which had lost its charm after the oil crisis. Created under the vision of Jim Wangers, Pontiac's chief marketing manager, the Can-Am combined powerful performance with standout design elements. With only about 1,377 units ever made, it's a true collector's item. In this video, we'll dive into what makes the Pontiac Can-Am a fascinating piece of automotive history. So stick around to find out. The Pontiac Can-Am's exterior was crafted to turn heads at a time when muscle cars were fading from the spotlight. Built on the Le Mans Sport Coupe, it merged the squared off luxury of the Grand Prix with the aggressive performance cues of the Trans Am, resulting in a striking and memorable design. Finished exclusively in cameo white, the Can-Am featured bold tricolour stripes in yellow, orange and red. These stripes ran along the hood, doors and rear deck, making a striking visual statement. The iconic Shaker hood scoop, borrowed from the Trans Am, emerged through the hood, signalling the car's powerful capabilities. Adding to its sporty appearance was a three-piece ducktail rear spoiler, enhancing the car's aerodynamic profile. The louvered rear side windows added a distinctive touch to its sleek silhouette, while the Rally 2 wheels, matched to the body colour, completed the muscular look. These unique features set the Can-Am apart from other cars of its era, ensuring it caught the eye of enthusiasts and onlookers. With a wheelbase of 112 inches, a length of 208.6 inches, and a width of 77.7 inches, the Can-Am had an imposing presence on the road. Despite its substantial size, the design conveyed both power and elegance, making it a standout in Pontiac's lineup. The blend of performance-inspired elements with luxury touches made the Can-Am one of the most visually appealing muscle cars of the late 1970s, leaving a lasting impression on all who saw it. The Pontiac Can-Am's interior was all about blending comfort with a performance vibe. Buyers could choose from interior trim colours like black, red, white and tan, allowing for a touch of personalisation. The materials, which featured durable fabrics and vinyl, were practical and just stylish, typical of the late 70s. The dashboard and console took inspiration from the Grand Prix, giving the Can-Am an upscale feel. The clear set of gauges, including a speedometer reaching up to 100 mph, ensured drivers had all the information they needed at a glance. The centre console, also borrowed from the Grand Prix, added a premium touch and extra storage. Standard features included power steering, power brakes and an AM-FM radio, quite advanced for the time. Optional upgrades like air conditioning, a tilt steering wheel and power windows offered additional comfort and convenience, making the Can-Am not just a performer but a well-rounded vehicle. The seats were designed for both support during spirited driving and comfort on long trips. The spacious cabin provided plenty of room for both driver and passengers, enhancing the overall driving experience. The intuitive layout of controls allowed for easy operation, keeping the focus on driving enjoyment. The Pontiac Can-Am's interior successfully combined luxury, functionality and performance-oriented features. This blend made it not just a striking muscle car on the outside, but also a comfortable and enjoyable car to drive. At the heart of the Pontiac Can-Am lay the 400 cubic inch Pontiac V8, part of the W72 series. This powerhouse delivered 200 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque, which was impressive for the late 1970s, especially given the emission restrictions of the time. This engine was a tweaked version of the one used in the Trans Am, offering a significant performance boost over the standard 400 in the Le Mans Sport Coupe. For those in California and high altitude areas, there was an alternative, a 403 cubic inch Oldsmobile V8 producing 185 horsepower. This engine was chosen for its better compliance with emission standards. While slightly less powerful than the Pontiac V8, 
it still provided strong performance figures. The Can-Am came with automatic transmission only. The Pontiac 400 engine was paired with the TH400, a durable and smooth shifting three-speed automatic. For the Oldsmobile 403 engine, the TH350 transmission was used, which was another three-speed automatic known for its reliability. Performance-wise, the Can-Am clocked a 0 to 60 mile per hour time of around 10 seconds and completed the quarter mile in about 17 seconds at 84 mile per hour. These figures were just unbelievable at the time, considering the car's substantial weight. The Can-Am featured a 2.41 rear gear ratio, striking a balance between performance and fuel economy. This ratio allowed for decent acceleration and efficient cruising, making it suitable for both spirited driving and everyday use. The Pontiac Can-Am's journey began and ended in 1977, marking it as a rare and distinctive muscle car. Assembly started in Pontiac, Michigan with the base Le Mans Sport Coupe models. These cars were then sent to the Motortown Corporation where they received their unique Can-Am touches, the rear ducktail spoiler, shaker hood scoop and the striking tri-colour striped decals. Originally, Pontiac planned to produce 5,000 units but various challenges cut this number short. One major hurdle was the breaking of the mould used for the fibreglass rear spoiler. This issue occurred after about 1,300 cars were built, causing a significant delay. Reproducing the mould was too costly and time-consuming, leading to the decision to halt production. Additionally, some Pontiac executives worried that the Can-Am might hurt sales of the Grand Prix, as both cars shared similar components and target audiences. Most Can-Ams were distributed within the United States, with a special allocation for California and high-altitude areas. These regions received the Oldsmobile 403 engine version to meet stricter emission standards. Despite its brief production run, the Can-Am left a lasting impression with its distinctive design and performance features. Back in 1977, the Pontiac Can-Am had an MSRP of around $5,704. This price positioned it as a high-performance, limited-edition vehicle with standout features and styling. Despite its premium price for the time, the Can-Am's blend of performance and visual appeal made it a highlight in the muscle car market of the 1970s. Today, the Can-Am is a prized collector's item. Its rarity and historical significance have significantly increased its value and well-preserved models can fetch over $50,000 with some even going higher depending on their condition and history. Well, that's about all from this video. So what do you think makes the Can-Am so special? Let us know in the comments section below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more automotive content. Thanks for watching.